Right. So before we start, we have a theme song, and when we have when I have guests on, I have them say their name so I can cut it over my co-host because he's not going to be okay. on here. So if you guys could just say your name both, and then I'll, I'll just cut that in. Sam, Max, and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Sam, Max, and Alan. I see that. You guys have a YouTube channel, right? Nitpicks. Yeah, that's the one. And nitpicks. I found you guys from the your, the Thirteen Reasons Why video just popped up as a like a suggested video clicked on it and i thought you guys had a lot of really good points well i thought sam had a lot of really good points yes max <laughs> i didn't know you existed when i was watching it originally but can you guys tell yeah, me a, a bit about your channel yeah i mean do you want to talk about it yeah right? sure yeah, channel. i mean uh basically we we just sort of look at tv shows um there's a lot of like online review channels and we just thought that because TV is such a massive thing now, it's sort of like been left aside because a lot of people who invest the time into watching an entire season usually really like it. So they don't really want to hear like criticisms about it. And that was sort of the gap in the market, I guess we saw. Um, because our, me and Max will, we invest like hours into a show and then it will be finished and we'll be like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be no like, kind of like online kind of review to really sort of fulfill that gap in our souls. Yeah. Um, so yeah, me and Max, we write all the videos together. So, um, though it was m- my voice saying, yeah. saying everything, it was. It's like our collaborative ideas. Yeah. So like, yeah, generally like we'll just, we, it's just like fast. It's like a fun little project that we do th- together. Yeah. And so it feels like very much like a shared platform for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, although Sam, we, cause we've always been writing together anyway. Um, and Sam, cause Sam made the first two videos by himself. And then he brought me in for the Doctor Who video. Which is our third video, yeah. Yeah. And, and then after that, I've just always been... like, So all the opinions that end up in the show are always our shared opinions. It's like yeah. always, So we've always the ones who discuss it together. And then we write it out together. And then I help Sam with the voice recording. And then like he edits it. And yeah. I'll put in like bits and bobs there as well. So it's it, it feels a lot like our sort of child together in yeah. the end. It's our baby. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I, it, um, it may just be me, but it may be impossible to differentiate who is speaking when. So if I get you guys confused, uh, uh, I'm sorry in <laughs> advance. No, that's okay. A lot of people say we sound kind of similar. I've never thought we sounded that similar, but I think it's especially to an untrained ear of English accent. I mean, we get probably one in every five comment on all our videos is this guy sounds like I hate everything. <laughs> 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 If you're from the UK, like he doesn't sound that much like me, no. <laughs> but because to an American ear, I think it's just sort of it all blends into so it, the into racist like, American ear. Yeah. You racist, Alan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you I all mean, sound mostly. the same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's my that's biggest what thing. Done. That's that's what I try to promote on this show as much as possible is just blanket racism. racism. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're adopting like a child from Thailand, <laughs> yes. so you can actually. Like more racist. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's can, more condensed like, and it's always available. Yeah. I don't have to go look. <laughs> <at> it. <laughs> this is really going to help you with the adoption. Oh now. yeah, I might need to cut that out. <laughs> 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 I got to remember that people listen to this thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, and then the the third thing is why. Sorry, yeah, continue. Yeah, so uh, but no, the thirty reasons. Why... <laughs> Ah! <laughs> the Skype lag so is there's uh, a slight delay. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Um, but no, the 13 Reasons Why video is really what's been a, a, what's defined our subscriber base now, though. Yeah, in a lot of sure. ways because it's gotten so many views. It just it pretty much like tripled our subscriber count. <laughs> yeah, in a couple of days. So. Yeah. I mean, we never thought it would do well because we thought like, yeah. oh, the show came out months ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we only did 13 Reasons Why because we did the Defenders video and it did really badly. <laughs> and we put, we put like loads of work into that. And it was like, we thought it was our best video we made <laughs> up to date. And we're like, yes, we can't wait to put it out. And then we put it out and it did so badly. <laughs> like, it's the worst. It's, 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 it's the least views out of any video. And then we were kind of like, 
really like like oh like, we just felt like really depressed like sad <laughs> afterwards and we were kind of like, losing a bit of enthusiasm we we're like what should we do our next video on and then just a subscriber like beneath just went oh you should do a video on 13 reasons why and we were just like fine yeah we'll do that <laughs> and then we watched it and made it we like we always get into the making process but we put it out kind of expecting the same thing <laughs> Yeah. And then it just went really big, and we just did not expect it no, to be no as well received as possible. But looking back, it does make sense because I don't think it had been talked about in the same way, in the way that we had talked about it, really. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's what I found. I feel like a lot of um, reviews of the show are too positive. Like, they are kind of. Like, I don't feel like you guys were just negatively attacking the show, and but like. There's a lot of things to criticize about the show. It is not well done. Yeah. They, they drop the ball in no. so many important areas and people are just blindly, I think it, I think it's kind of worn off now that it's been so long. I don't know if people still love it as much as they did, but at the time people were defending this show so aggressively. It didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think like one of the main points we say in our video about it is that sort of the whole suicide and depression and mental health thing is almost used as a veil. Yeah. Uh, it's used as a way to make it seem like more deep and more pretentious than it really is, which sort yeah. of actually like avoids criticism because yeah. you feel like, oh, you can't criticize it because if you're criticizing 13 Reasons Why by extension, you're criticizing all people who have felt the, the kind of themes that's brought up in the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. It's like, it, because, because it sort of, it really like takes that theme of like depression and rape and suicide and runs with it so much. Um, and of course, like the way, when we talk about it, we talk about how like on the surface level, it's how on the surface those themes are really tackled and how that works against it. But because simply it's dealing with those themes, like it makes it really difficult to approach it critically. And I think that's the case with like a lot of shows. Like there's a lot of like TV shows and movies generally that, that deal with those issues that people will then get behind really easily. And then like it, the space to talk about what the problems with it is really hard to get into. It's really hard to start that discussion then because people feel like it can be a, ter- a personal attack on them. Yeah. It's which kind is of why a, it's, not it's kind of a, an emotional cheat, right? Like you, you do this thing and you automatically get into people's hearts you know like you open that door Mm. just by using the topic and then you yeah it's like there's nothing you can do to you know mess that up it's kind of like your favorite sports team but with suicide yeah definitely another uh, great metaphor yeah yeah, that is a good (laughs) good Uh, like because another movie that did that a bit i thought was like perks of being a wallflower like does that as a movie a bit as well and it it, like i think it's it it works as almost like a subgenre of like that like oh depression's really bad kind of space and it, it automatically just means that like it like the standard viewer is going to like work really hard to try and connect with it and so you know the people that criticize it then like were are vilified quite quickly yeah did you guys watch Atypical yet? Have you seen that on Netflix? No. It's uh Is that similar? It well it's all about autism. It's about a kid with autism who's on the spectrum and him like figuring out his life and Oh yeah. And I actually felt like they did that part really well. It was everything else outside of that where the, yeah. the mom was having an affair and people were struggling with different things, but everything was like just like thrown at it to like try to uh, uh, incite this response to the show and get you invested and it just did not work. Like it, it's just so lazy to add in these extra, uh, points of drama without investing into them first. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. I think because what I was going to say was, um, because, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. Say well, I mean, I think with, with 13 reasons why, like, the main the main core of it is it is it is just one of those like cheesy American high school you know teen melodramas, um, you know you've got all these like archetypal characters, yeah. you, you know you've got the jocks, you've got these cheerleaders, and yeah. you've you've got this co- whole concept of oh but he likes him but she likes her, 
And like, that's fine. Like, mm. that's all fine. Like, you can, some people are into that. Some people like that. But personally, I don't really care about shows that do no, that. It's yeah. a demographic. But then when you add in suicide, graphic suicide, images of suicide, and, um, this whole idea of, of like mental Martyrdom health and, and, yeah. and like, then that's when, that's when you're kind of being, a, be, being like actually dangerous yeah it, it, it makes the whole issue very reductive and that's like a huge problem with it is the conveyance of characters being black and white and not having like nuance when the issue you're tackling is a very real world issue the it's just not it just doesn't work to then have characters be like like clearly good or bad and working within a very black and white spectrum it just it, it, it specifically works against the show's message but like this is an adult theme put into this fucking like childlike like space and it's a, it, it just it was really weird man it's a really weird show it's a very weird show <laughs> <laughs> like the that it exists is surreal as hell we were we basically i hadn't actually even heard of it that much before we did the video on it i, uh, I hadn't seen any anyone do a video on it i just i just knew it existed and i knew the plot vaguely and we got ready to watch them. I think we watched it all in one sitting. Yeah, we did. We watched all, we watched all 13 hours of the show yeah. in one sitting. We were up like all night watching it. Yeah. And it got, it got so difficult. It was literally painful to try and finish it because yeah. it was so frustrating at points. You should have seen Sam. There were points like, oh, it happens with a lot of shows. There's always that point where you have to pause it and just rant about it for a bit so you can keep going. <laughs> but with Sam, that three or four times like he needed to stop it and just like really like have an outburst and like by the end of it like i was just physically like exhausted it was really it's like a draining show there's yeah. nothing uh, you know and the the thing is, is even if you take out the themes the themes is what makes it unique but like actually how it's constructed as a show it's still not like good <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well let's like you know the writing Sorry, yeah. Oh no, I was just gonna say let's let's break down the the plot of it if you want you guys want to sum it up. Um, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. geez. <laughs> no, everyone's. You can tell we haven't done a podcast before. <laughs> oh, we we don't have much structure to this show. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, the plot is Hannah Baker. Um, she's committed suicide um, before before it starts, and Clay Jensen is the main character who. Had a crush on her. He sort of had a crush on her. She sort of had a crush on him, but it didn't quite work out. Um, is he, he's dealing with those, those kind of uh, the, those feelings of grief. Um, everyone, everyone in this sort of community, everyone at the high school, uh, Hannah's parents are sort of dealing with that grief. And then he finds a box of tapes delivered to his house, and these are thirteen tapes. Each tape is basically talking about one person, and this is not me saying the show says this who contributed to her suicide. So she, she literally does blame these people for her suicide. She is she's saying these, it's these people's fault yeah. that I killed myself. And now you're going to have to listen to an hour tape about everything you did wrong to me. And then the, the show take, takes place when Clay Jensen finds this tape. And then what happens is we just go through each of those tapes, which focuses on a different individual who she blames for her suicide. And we see how Clay Jensen kind of deals with that news and how he responds to that person. And all the while it's leading up to the point where he knows that he's on the tapes. And, oh, oh God. Um, and he knows he's on the tapes. So, uh, a lot of it, as well as him dealing with like that building anxiety to finding out what he did to contribute to her suicide. So the, the whole show, the whole show, like 11 episodes, 11 hours of, oh yeah, but Clay, you haven't heard your tape. Yeah, that's yeah. constantly yeah. emphasized. Yeah. It's yeah. like he goes up to these people in the show and he's like, you did this, you're like an abysmal person. And they're like, well, you don't know. Have you listened to your tape yet, Clay? And yeah. then he always goes, oh, my God. And he's like yeah. freaking out. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you're as bad as everyone else. Yeah. And then um, he listens to the tape. And Hannah's, Hannah's oh, sentence. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hannah just goes, <laughs> <laughs> she goes, Clay, you're probably wondering why you're on this tape. And in truth. You really shouldn't be on these tapes because yeah. you did nothing wrong. Yeah. Well, this is what, what we find out Clay Jensen does to her is that she was freaking out. Like they're about to have sex and then she like freaks out. She doesn't want to. 
um, because of like past experience with boys. And then he's like, no, please, like, what's the matter? Let me talk to you. And she's like, go, go away, get out. Get and then she respects that wish and goes, okay, I'll leave you. Like, but always like, you can talk to me or whatever. And then he leaves. And then she's just like, and then you, and then in the tape, she just goes, and then that's what you did. You left. <laughs> and I needed <laughs> someone to stay. <laughs> like, You've told him to go. Yeah, and it's like I don't know what that is. It's like the I. It's like it's it's kind of like the first person who does what she asks. There's a lot of like obviously themes of like people like not respecting like what she wants and overstepping bounds. And then the first person that like actually respects what she wants and it still like messes her up. It it just seems to like really go against a lot of like the motif of the show. Yeah, well, he, Clay, is talking to the Cuban, Puerto Rican, I don't know, the guy oh, with yeah. the, the sweet hair. Yeah. I call him Tony. Cuban, yeah, Tony, Cuban Tony. Jesus. Cuban Jesus, yeah. And he's Cuban like, Jesus. was it my fault? Everything it does is great. <laughs> yeah. And Tony says, yeah. It, he's like, it's your fault. Like, you yeah! <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> that is yeah. insane. This show... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this show is also, so, so bad on so many levels. Um, it, I, it's just that, that episode, re- that was the moment where we were just like, it's, it's dropped the ball. It's yeah. dropped the ball. Because we were holding out for Clay's head. Because I yeah. thought, okay, well, look, Clay's this, this perfect guy. He's a yeah. sweet, like, geeky guy. And he was always really lovely to Hannah. And um, he's, you know, he's really passionate about these things. And like, he's our main character. And I thought, if they show that he also did something bad, then they will be doing something nuanced. They will yeah. be adding layers to his character. And yeah. they will make us question, you know, not only things that Clay's done, but things pe- they've done in their own life. Yeah, because yeah. through the show, show wants you to connect with Clay, yeah. project yourself onto Clay. And I thought, oh, this is why they've rated into the 11th episode, because if you heard what he did straight away, you wouldn't like it. But then it's just such an easy, easy cop out to just make him do nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it just means like your feelings towards him like don't change. Do you know what I mean? There's like, so it, the show is in no way dynamic. Like through the whole time, the people that are established as bad, you continuously think they're bad, and the people that are established that as good are like wholly good through like the entire Cuban show. Cuban Jesus, like Cuban Jesus, Tony. I, 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 that guy, I want him to be my best friend. I would love him. <laughs> but like, Tony, the sexy gay guy to just with, come in I and his Mustang. Like, yeah, and yeah. his Mustang just like giving you little nuggets of like deep advice <laughs> yeah. and like being this like really hard guy. He's just, he's like, there's nothing wrong with Tony. Tony or the guy, the other guy as well that Clay was getting on with. He's kind of like a jock who dies in the car accident. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, What's his name? I don't I, remember. He dies. He's, yeah, he wasn't but, drunk, but he had a bunch of beer, no, bu- was, beer cans in his truck or something, right? Car. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, what was, what was the name of the girl who was on the tapes? Who <laughs> hit the, Courtney, yeah, I want to say Courtney. Yeah, Courtney. It was Courtney's fault that he died. Yeah, yes, she knocked like, down the stop sign that he ran and got in a car yeah. accident. Yeah, and he, he, again, he's just like the loveliest guy in the yeah, world. He's giving him like relationship advice. Relationship advice, advice really trying sweet. to get him included. And it's like everyone else is like, Clay, you're a nerd. You're a weirdo. And he's like, hey, Clay. And then well, he dies. I mean, what if he was actually drunk? Like, but like the stop sign was a part of it. Well, then you would yeah. have more things uh, to question. So like a huge part that makes the show frustrating is like the build up or like the trying to establish nuance and then the abandonment, abandonment yeah. of it. You see that with Clay. And that's done with Hannah as well. Yeah. Through the whole time, they're trying to like establish her as an unreliable narrator um, by going like, uh, like the, the characters are saying, oh, like not everything she says in those tapes are true and all of this. And Zach's note. And Zach, uh, which, which we'll get into. Yeah. Which we'll get into. The Zach's note thing is like there. And it's like, oh, maybe she is this unreliable narrator. But then that is seemingly abandoned by the end where everyone like gets their comeuppance and everyone realizes they're an arsehole. Yeah. So it's like, any form of like going people are a mixture of good and bad is like a bat is like just really like just it's so a bat it's just trash man yeah. yeah well i i appreciated hannah's character i felt like she was a crazy person and didn't <laughs> know what she was doing which makes sense for someone who is going through all that what i hated was everyone's yeah. responses to her being crazy like they should have been like this doesn't make any sense. This is, you know, insane. You can't 
Like they should have been tormented by these tapes and not like, I don't know. Yeah. She was, yeah. they, they, she should have been, you know, ridiculed for making these tapes and, you know, put down for doing yeah. it and not set up as like a hero for doing this thing. Like it's just, it's yeah. so crazy because, and it's like the only thing that makes sense to me that are like that would justify and justify is a very strong word that I don't even really mean, but is her getting raped. Her getting yeah. raped makes sense why you would make a tape to be like, Hey, this happened. This guy, yeah, you know, yeah. it's this guy's fault. That, yes, that is a compelling thing. You know, that's, that's a strong motive to do this. Everything else was yeah. so bad. And it was just like, okay. Oh, it makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> I I th- I just sort of think that the basically in the video um, we make, which is called the insult of thirteen reasons why. Um, one of my points, uh, one of our points, yeah. which I articulate, uh, is is that the characters of are basically very black and white, and all the bad people are just bad, and they aren't given much of like a background or motivation. Uh, is done in a very stereotypical way. And one of the points I make is about Bryce, who um, does actually like rape Hannah in a very like graphic like disturbing as well scene. as Hannah's mate as well as Hannah's um friend yeah and one of the points I make is that like he is just a psychopath yeah and he just he just decides like oh everyone everyone is below me and I'm just gonna rape and like a lot of people reacted like very strongly to that because they said like you know uh rapists and the idea of rape is not it's not as complicated as that. Some people are just like assholes and they do just rape. And like my point that I didn't really expand on was that rape is actually very complicated. You know, you've got like over 90% of all cases of rape being by like a boyfriend or someone that, you know, is you close have to given you. some form of consent to. Um, and also it's just, it, it, it does happen. I'm not saying there aren't psychopaths, jocks out there who do these things. I'm just saying that that was just like the easy way to do that kind of message. Um, there's a show, it's called, well, there's a film called This Is England, and then they made a film, uh, they made a TV show out of it. Yeah, we were thinking about, because we wanted to end the show with like recommending some TV series or films that like portray, tackle, yeah. tackle these issues yeah. in a really good way. Yeah. And This Is England was one of the ones we always came back to, and it was actually a point of comparison for us. Yeah. Uh, just because like, like basically like one of the characters, I, have you seen it? No, I haven't. Hey. Uh, the name of the podcast. I avoid, hey. I avoid everything about England. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We do smell bad and have terrible teeth. <laughs> it's fair enough. Um, but um, basically, like one of the main characters in that is raped by her dad, like continuously, and then he rapes someone else in this like truly, truly like horrific scene. However, like simply by the portrayal of him as a character, you understand that there's a lot of it, like it, it, there's so many more, there's so many layers going yeah. into him in his portrayal. But then it goes on to show, like, and it ends up with her murdering him, and it goes on to show like her struggle with with that, you know, her her and like the post traumatic stress yeah. that comes with you know being a rape victim. Yes, and then it all leads up to her trying to kill herself as well. And it's just the way that that's portrayed is like the second season of This Is England is so dirty and kind of like dire and like there's nothing beautiful about it like a big thing with 13 reasons why is everyone looks gorgeous like through this whole thing and it's very much it really emphasizes that whole like glorification of it but like with with that with this is england we just see this woman become like more pale and like squalid and like insular and And like she's detached from everything yeah yeah Um, it really shows like the the horrible reality of depression and, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. And I felt like in 13 Reasons Why, she's constantly saying how she feels, but they visually don't really try and show that or try and show that dissociation she has. And we don't... Her her way of thinking and her mindset is... It's not romanticized, but it, it's, 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 it's very much like, oh, this is like some... It's very cinematic. It's very on the than, surface. It's rather than dirty yeah. and like soul destroying, which is what it really should be. Yes. Yeah. I, I, growing up, I had one of my my cousins committed suicide, and I was you know like thirteen, and he there legitimately there's nothing that I really could have done 
But I carried guilt about that for yeah. years yeah. and years, and it tormented me, and I hated myself for a while. And yeah. when I watched this show, I just thought about like people who are you know have, know people that killed themselves or know you know had family members whatever are gonna watch this and see the the person who committed the suicide being the hero and everyone else being the villain is a terrible yeah. terrible scary message to yeah yeah to do so lazily and to just just pick pick horrible tragedies and throw it up on the screen and not not do it justice to not to not spend more than five minutes on this idea and you know do it well and because you can do it you can do heavy topics you can have terrible yeah. things happen no, you, have to, you have to do heavy topics like media you know we need to use these mediums to talk about issues like that's really important but we need to do it properly we need to do it right and we need to like always understand and try and convey the layers of like the layers that go into it especially when it's aimed at a young audience, actually, because young people are always trying to, uh, you know, generalize things and reduce things. You know, you, you, you want to, it's easy to do, but like uh, to make a show that pushes you and like celebrates that reduction of like a very serious issue is, is just a terrible idea. It's like, it's not going to work it, it, like, and it doesn't. And, you know, it ultimately, like we talked about, w- does have a lot of like, broad real world repercussions to people yeah no totally i mean i i think actually because we finished watching 13 reasons why and we were like oh yeah let's let's like insult the plot and the characters and the the line delivery and we started talking about like how it was just a bad show um but these this kind of idea of like revenge suicide you know using using guilt which which happens in any suicide anyone close to someone who commits suicide is going to feel guilty um, yeah and like a lot of therapy that comes with that is basically like it's not you know it's not your fault like, you don't have to blame yourself it's um um and and also that idea of her her sort of that graphic imagery where we see the full scene of her committing suicide and there was something about that that really did sit wrong with me mm-hmm. um and then we did some research and we found that just so so many professionals in that area had completely disowned this show and then as we looked more into it, um, we got these guidelines of the actual, like, you know, the actual suicide, you know, how to, how to portray suicide on screen in a safe way. And we looked through these guidelines and we realized that 13 reasons why it actually just like, they broke so many of these guidelines. And we could have gone into like why these guidelines exist, but like the main thing is that these are, you know, professionally done guidelines. They're there for a reason. And then just a majority of the video, like a third of the video, just became us talking about those guidelines and us realizing we need to take a very serious tone about yeah. it. I mean, because like what, some of the articles that we actually bring up in the video briefly, because we yeah. don't talk about we them. We just have them up on screen. Yeah. yeah. But like there have been cases where we've had, there are people who have actually emulated and tried to copy the suicide types in 13 Reasons Why. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> That that that's all you need. Like that clearly shows like that it has had yeah yeah is having an opposite effect as to what it's trying to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, because I mean that's a big part of someone's conclusion to coming to suicide is getting back at people. You know, sometimes it's it's. I'm not saying it's always that case or that it's you know. But if you feel yeah. so betrayed by someone, you're like, oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to show them. I'm going to, I'm going to get back to them. And then this show is like, yeah, that works. This is, you know, this is a, a a beautiful, noble thing to do. And it's, it's so wrong. It is not like that. Like the only, the only thing I, I appreciated about this show was when the mom found her in the tub and the, that actress, I don't, I don't know who it was, but she did such a good job of conveying, Mm like that despair and that sorrow and that, that just pain. Yeah, no, definitely. There, there are some things to like say that like the, the show as a whole doesn't work, but there are moments in the show which can be effective. We really, yeah. we, we were quite enjoying. There was a moment with clay where he's just starts to go crazy and yeah. like, really get fucked off with people. And, um, 
and, and starts hallucinating and, starts and freaking hallucinating. out. And I, I quite like that episode. Yeah, because, there's the whole performance Because later. just Clay becomes infinitely more interesting. Yeah. And, like, there's this whole bit where he goes on this, like, huge tirade, like, this monologue where he, like, rants at the entire, like, school, high school. Yeah. And it's, like, it's well acted. It's, like, it's well delivered. Yeah, I mean, but, the performances aren't bad. No. And the cinematography isn't bad. No. And it has a good soundtrack and it has some good scene transitions between those those um, memories and, yeah. and what's going on in real life. Like, there's one especially, like, where it's just, like, it's just, like, a living room and, like, two actors walk outside and then, like, as they close the sliding door, just this huge party's there, and it's all done in one shot, and that's like quite nice. But <laughs> <laughs> that's just it, it's, it's just moments, isn't it? it? Yeah. It's, it there's there's thirteen it's hours like, of maybe ten <laughs> minutes of stuff that's good. Yeah, yeah. and and ultimately, what what all really brings it down is 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 the writing. Like the writing, the the dialogue is just not very well like written. Yeah. yeah. So well, none of them felt like high schoolers. None of them. No, they all like were forty. Yeah. yeah. And like the Tony, he, none of his motivations made any sense to me. He's like. I had no he idea. Was a he was a magic. <laughs> he was a magic wizard. <laughs> Me and Sam, when we started watching this, we genuinely thought Tony like ha- wasn't like a real person or like, supernatural. Yeah, yeah, we thought this show might go like weirdly supernatural because Tony's always mystically showing up. Yes. Yeah, he just appears. Just, like, yeah. So Clay, do you want to ride? And then yeah. Clay's like, okay. It's like, you know, what's going on with you? And he seems to know everything. He always knows. Everything, and we're like, yeah. is this guy Cuban Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then you've just got like the drama, which is so forced. And you just got like Hannah, Hannah and her friends. For, she like, she's like in a high school with a social group. And like, we've all been in high school. We like you know what it's like. You just, just sometimes you fall out with a social group, but she's acting as if it's like the, like only it's happened to yeah, her. That, and it's like that, the most horrific thing. Yeah, definitely. That's the thing is like, she equates a lot of the little social things that happen within a high school to like a lot of people. She's equating that to some really disastrous, horrible things yeah. like uh, Bryce's rape and uh, you know being touched up, being touched like, up and stalked and stuff, and like being responsible for someone's death, which and is, being was, yeah, being, as well as like pulling Clay in with all of that as well, yeah, and being like, oh Clay, get and ready for your tape. Like yeah. all of these things are just like very like different. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it and equating them to be the same what? and having the same impacts is very strange to me yeah well i think i th- like personally i think that's okay like, i didn't have a problem with that so much her mm. having that but the way the show justified it bothered me because yeah. you know i think if, if a person is you know kind of mentally unstable they're gonna take everything or they can potentially take everything to be the worst thing but ever she's not, and she's not mentally unstable at the beginning like she i think she's like yeah, it's ne- they, they no- never say that she has depression or she. Yeah, like, there's never an implication with... or a conveyance of social. And of, it's like, like any the kind first, of issues. the first few tapes are just like, are just like she meet. The first tape is her meeting up with that guy and then him showing the the images and then everyone calls her a slut, which is weird because normally if you receive a picture from someone about uh, of a girl, your immediate response would be like that guy's a bit of an asshole, like Jordan. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, why does the school immediately go on his side and be like, yeah, she is a slut? It's like, how, in what world would you receive an image yeah. of a, a classmate, like, on a slide where you can see her underwear and be like, what a slut? You would immediately be like, why have you sent me this? This yeah. is, like, inappropriate. Yeah, and also, like, going on from that as well, like, the entire components of the schooling system that is, like, going on, yeah. is, you know, this is, like, this girl was being very clearly bullied and laughed at, right? And the school does nothing. And like, I don't know, like, I can t- I didn't go to that, that great of a school. We both went to the same school and it was a bit trash. Yeah. But if, if stuff like that was going on, like, they would do, they have to do something about it legally. They know that, like, how this stuff can go. They don't just leave it. Yeah. And it, 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 it was like the portraying of the things that should help you or the support systems that are in place. They portrayed them as being so inadequate. And <laughs> yeah, like, I, I like it's like everything that could have gone wrong absolutely went wrong and that's like that's not how this goes like that's not the real life situation yeah yeah I guess my point about being okay with Hannah's character is more Mm. that she 
she should have been crazy, but the show didn't make yeah. it seem like she was. Yeah. Like her actions were of a crazy person, but the show yeah. made her the hero, and that was yeah. where it failed. Like, yeah. no, make uh, her crazy it, and make people respond to her in a proper manner. Like, there, if maybe Clay could have appreciated her as the hero character, no one else mm, should have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, that should have been it. Like, it shouldn't have yeah. been. We all killed Hannah Baker. We are all responsible. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just, I also think like the idea that someone can get to a place where they actually want to end their lives over the space of like a year of high school is like very strange. I think to like get to that place, it takes like years and years and years of like just having a hard time and like really having it rough. Like, I mean, like I think we all we've all known people with like struggles. I and, think like, problems, I think what but... it is though is that her suicide is treated as a completely reactionary thing. Mm. So she, she commits suicide in reaction um, to these things when, in, when really that's not how it works. It's, it's usually like a, a, a long-term struggle thing. And it's kind of just like, it wears you down rather than like, Oh, this has happened now. I'm going to do it. It's actually, but um speaking more on your, like the criticism of the schooling system and mental health, like we've, we've got like so many comments um, on the video because it's got quite a lot of views so we get a lot of comments uh, and a lot of people have said well I went to high school like and I can get help from my counsellor and a lot of people have said oh well there's a lot of problems in the schooling system with counsellors and that might be the case and like but by not showing a single person help Hannah by not having a single like figure to be like hey look I can help you what what they are promoting is they're saying, well, if you have any struggles, no one's going to help you. Like, you won't be able to get help. No one will understand you. And so if someone's watching that and they're in a low point, it just, I can imagine it It makes you feel a little bit more helpless. I mean, in what way would, like, after watching the show, if you're in that sort of frame of mind, like, you're not going to leave that thinking, oh, I should now go and try and get yeah, help from, like, exactly. my school counsellor. Yeah. Or like, oh, I should definitely talk to someone about that. As well as the parenting. The pa the parents in this show are the worst parents yeah. I've ever seen. They're like aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a scene where like Clay's mum is like, Oh, you you had a nightmare and you're covered in sweat and one of someone in your school's committed suicide. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're gonna be fine. And Clay's like, Mum, please don't take this case. Yeah. And she's like, No, I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah, and he's like got injuries on his <laughs> yeah, head like, and he's, he's out like till punched late. in the face. He like vomits yeah. on the parents' table and the parents yeah. are still sitting around going, like, what shall we do? Let let's make him keep his door open. Yeah. If he, <laughs> yeah. If he misbehaves. Like, if he keeps his door open, that's gonna fix all of this. It's like, come on, man. And then, like, Courtney's dad comes in and is like, you okay, princess? She's like, yeah, dad. And he <laughs> shuts the door and she just drinks, like, alcohol. <laughs> Vodka. Yeah. Oh, God. What do you guys, uh, how do you guys feel about them making a season two? Have you heard about that yet? Yeah, we've all watched it. We're gonna have to watch it. Yeah. Um, my main question is just like, what direction are they going to take it? In? I think like, they might take a school shooter kind of thing. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. because we see we see the photographer. We randomly see the photographer with a whole case full of guns, like out of nowhere. He's going to shoot up a school and then leave thirteen tapes as to why he shot. Why he shot up the school? <laughs> I don't know if they still do tapes. No. I reckon they'll find a way to bring back Hannah Baker with flashbacks. Yeah. Like in a really or hallucinations. uncomfortable way. I don't know. I mean, they've said as well that we'll hear other people's side of the story. Yeah. And, like, I think they might be building on the idea that, like, Hannah is an unreliable narrator. And, like, everything we saw in season one, or m the majority of the flashbacks we saw in season one were fake. And, they're, like, actually they happened slightly differently. Um, I mean, I just don't... I don't know where Clay's gone as well. Yeah, Can we just talk about that final shot? That ending show? was so that weird. That was really weird. The driving off into the sunset ending with like the rat edgy kids like in the car. Yeah, he got the girl in the end oh, and they God. drive off into the sunset. I don't and know. Then it's like, and it's like, what is this ending? This is like the ultimate like Hollywood happy ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to a oh show my. about to a show about a high schooler who kills themselves. It's like not. It's like tonally really weird. Yeah, because isn't it like Clay realizes he's kind of responsible for killing herself, her, killing herself, or he feels like he's responsible for killing herself. He's going to kill himself, and then Tony's like, "No, don't do it," and then they drive off. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. What did you take? What did you make of that, Alan? Um. Yeah, I don't remember that 
that well. I remember <laughs> <laughs> this show. This show, I have a hard time pinning down anything like specific because it's rather unmemorable. <laughs> yeah, it is bad. I mean, we spent three days writing about it. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it was I, I, a long time. If I remember correctly, he's at the coffee shop and the other girl. Of course, he's in the coffee shop. Where else would Where he be? Go, oh, go. Yeah. he's a kid, man. F- we'll F- go coffee shop. F my life forever. Is that what it was? FML forever. FML forever. <laughs> that was. <laughs> We're actually. Start saying that. That's our new catchphrase. I think that should be a podcast. A like, po- this should be a catchphrase. podcast regular catchphrase. Like, hello and welcome to Have You Seen It? F- FML Forever. FML Forever. <laughs> it it it's just so out of touch with what people talk like. I get. I feel like my aunt wrote these teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah, remind, it did give us life is strange vibes as well. Oh yeah. Do you the know game, that the video game Life, Life is strange? strange? I haven't played it. Oh, oh bro, God. you should give that a go. It's hella cool. <laughs> we, I've got dyed hair, and I can travel back in time, mm, and okay. my friend is cool as well, because she also has dyed hair and a beanie. <laughs> Check shirts for life and Polaroid cameras. Hella Ooh! Cool. Hella cool. Well, now, since you guys do mostly YouTube stuff, do you guys have you just done a weird color on only the top of your head yet? Are you guys that YouTube famous yet, or are you still holding up? I've got, I know I've got purple hair and a lip piercing, bro. I'm just mostly working on the diss tracks at the moment. Oh, yeah. okay, there you go. That's that's the way to go. Right. This is how you get in cloud gang. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's your guys' oh, yeah. overall ranking or thoughts, or however you want to? We don't. We normally of the-, the way we rate shows or movies is if it comes on TV, what are you gonna do? But I feel like everyone here is just going to turn it off, right? You, would you guys continue to watch well, season one again? As a, as a bit of a masochist, I'd probably, I'd probably rewatch it. I, I like to actively seek out things that upset me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think the fact that we will watch season two does say, like, it was boring. It was boring in a lot of places, but it was interesting to see like what would happen. And I think the main thing though was just like. What, why is Clay on the tapes? We both just yeah. kept on shouting, why is Clay on the tapes yeah. for like 11 hours? And then when we found out why he was on the tapes, so we, we, we were shouting. We, we were so angry. Like, <laughs> our viewing sessions can get very heated. We got really, we got really f- with that we one. Got so angry. <laughs> it was too much. I think like the general, the general racing of it is like, it depends really how you see it and how you look at it. If you see it as like a dumb, as a dumb teenage drama, then it's, 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 it's actually like a little bit better than those dumb standard teenage dramas because it's like the soundtrack's a bit better. But like, if you actually see it as like having any impact on someone dealing with those things, yeah. whether that's good or bad, any kind of impact. I and mean, we have had people who have said, it's "Oh, helping. you know, I actually was dealing with this. This show like spoke to me." And like for that, like you know, that's great. But like, really, it's I think because it is so it's so dangerous and because it glorifies and romanticizes her suicide so much in the way that it's imagery uh, and it also in the way that the whole plot revolves mm-hmm. around why she killed herself, and how the who's responsible, are you know, who's guilty, who isn't guilty. I think that just, in fact, makes it just quite offensive and quite insulting and quite badly done and heavy handed in places. However, I do think it does have validity as a show as like a cultural anomaly. Yeah. Like if you like watch this as like something that exists within the real world, it does become like interesting thinking about the creative process behind this show and like why decisions were made is like interesting like there's a lot to like there's a lot to theorize about because like there are some things which is just like how could you even think this was like a good idea yeah or like how can you how do you think this would work and so like we we like it's interesting as that so like i will be quite interested in checking out the second season yeah just to try about like what decisions they're gonna make next and just to try and understand it yeah yeah I, i that's what i like i were you guys intrigued when you started it were you like yeah. drawn in with the first episode? I was drawn in around episode four because yeah. I was so by then I was like, by then they'd emphasized that Clay had done something up enough. Where I was like, oh shit, like this is going to be mental. why is Clay on the yeah? Tapes? And then like as and then 
it was it seemed to be kind of slightly getting better as well when he start when he started like freaking out and he had all these hallucinations and stuff yeah um and then it kind of and then it and then basically the payoff is so weak yeah. uh, like completely the, up. the final two episodes are just like such a drag yeah like like and as well like the the suicides the suicides scene in itself like i uh, basically like it is it is very like upsetting to watch and yes. like that was what they were going for they really wanted to make people uncomfortable and upset when they saw that and like i think it's impossible to watch that scene and not feel anything yeah. um and it, it's like I'll, watching the passion of the christ yeah um <laughs> except without the added bonus of mel gibson's insane mentality <laughs> Mel Gibson actually is crazy. Not even <laughs> playing a character is crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, and like the idea is that like oh we didn't want to hide away from it. We wanted people to see like the true like the true like intensity of it. But if you are suicidal, you are thinking about it. And by putting it into a show, it is actually it makes it more tangible, more realistic. Yeah. But, you yeah. Know, the thought process is now like oh that's how easy it is. Or, oh that's that's what it would be like. Yeah. So, well, so I felt, like I felt like the suicide scene was the only part that didn't glorify it. Like that was the only time they took it somewhat serious. But like you guys were saying, yeah. it was completely done terrible. Like it was they went against yeah. every guideline, every every idea that, you know, smart people have put together like, "Hey, don't do this thing because it can trigger someone to yeah. do that." Yeah. And they're like, "Ah, let's just do it anyways yeah. cuz yeah. it'll be effective." And also, yeah. it's worth looking at it as well as in terms of like a TV series, like there are ca- character beats need to be earned, right? Yes. So like Clay's reveal, what he's doing, that was kind of earned. And that's why you, we were sticking with it because they were earning this reveal and the payoff is really bad. Yeah. With Hannah's like suicide, although it's weird to talk about it as like a character beat, it's not earned. Yeah. As well. It, it just like happens. Yeah. It has to happen. We yeah. know it has to happen. But like, if if you were to completely re-edit 13 Reasons Why to a point when you start watching it and you have no idea if she's going to kill herself and you watch everything she does and her whole journey, all the flashbacks in chronological order, um, and then you, you, you know, you have all the things in modern day in that order as well, you would sort of think like, oh, okay. Um, but like that was a very quick response. To, to something yeah. that happened yeah. you know she went to, she was like i'm feeling positive i'm going to see the counselor oh that didn't work there we go i'm going to react to that by killing myself uh this show it, it it's, <laughs> it's it's very upsetting to me like it's just I, it's not it's just lazily written it's like bad writing yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it it i just don't know who the audience was who who <laughs> who did they have in mind? Who was their goal demographic that they're like, this will, this will be perfect for them. Teenage girls. Teenage like teen- girls. Yeah. And that is, that is yeah, awful. School, but... That is so scary that people would, cause it's not like just, it's not like a YouTube series, you know, it's not something that five people were like, Hey, I have this idea. Let's do this thing. This was a, yeah. you know, highly produced. There was many people that it was going through. Many That's people the- saw it. And yet it yep. still came out. And it's like Netflix recommended, like, check out this. Like, yes. Watch this. Like, yeah, like it was, this. It was heavily, yeah. heavily pushed. It was really advertised when it first came out. And I was, um, I was actually teaching at the time. I was, I did a year as like sort of a, a teacher assistant. And, um, I, there was a lot of students who like were watching it and really praising it. Yeah. For like what it was doing. And I, you know, we've all talked about this, but like, you know, when you actually sit down and watch it, it's like terrible. I mean, a lot of schools banned it as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were like, don't watch this. It's... We heard a lot about that in the yeah, comments. Yeah. A lot of people have said like, oh, all our teachers have banned it. They've told us not to watch it. Which does seem to work against it. Cause the moment something's banned, I want to watch it more. Yeah. Even... Yeah. Yeah. I, I would recommend if you haven't seen this yet, you can skip it. Like there's not really, there's nothing worth in seeing that's in it. Like there's nothing. No, like, I mean, I would say watch our video on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go. yeah, go watch, go watch the nitpicks video on Thirteen Reasons, and you'll get more than enough to understand why the show is not very good. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I, but the the thing the thing is as well with it is it is very clear 
like why it doesn't work. Like it is it, very like obvious. Um, you know, and I think the moment I even heard about the show, I already knew what the issues were going to be with it. And when I finally got around to watching it, everything I thought was wrong with it was confirmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then even more so. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, if a friend of yours has seen it and you like talking about stuff, then you could watch it for discussion because it does make a good discussion. I mean, we've been talking for ages about it. And Justice League. And Justice League. Check out Justice League if you <laughs> if you want something good to chat about. If you about. want something really good to talk about. If you want to see Hollywood crash and burn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see the implosion of capitalism check out Justice League oh, and, and if you want to see Ben Affleck literally look miserable and not be able to express because of too much Botox <laughs> just, 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 I'm so sorry it's really I, I slept on it and it still pissed me off it's so bad <laughs> But no, back on to 13 Reasons Why. It's like Justice League, if basically. Put, if they put Batman in 13 Reasons Why, it would be more watchable. It'd probably fit as well. <laughs> Clay Jensen is kind of Batman in a oh, lot yeah. of ways. He's, he's, he's Bruce tried. Wayne as a child. Yes, that's right. Is that's it? young Bruce Wayne right there. Right, right before his parents get murdered. Yes. Yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> With a loss. Well, how can people find you guys? We'll try to pull out um, on the suicide talk. I don't know how long yeah. it's going to go. Sorry to lead into your plugs no, from that, but. That's okay. Uh, N-I-T-P-I-X, nitpicks. Um, on, follow, yeah, follow us on Twitter as well. Twitter um, is fun. If you type in nitpicks, you can find us. Yeah. And or uh, just the insult of 13 reasons why. Yeah, if you type that in, it. that's like our like yeah, biggest video. So if you want to check that out, you can definitely do that as well. And then you can follow us at on Twitter at Icing That Pod. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, I don't know, Saturday I think it is.